사실 저만 해도 오늘 이 강연을 듣기 전까지 국경지대가 갖는 어떤 특정한 이미지와 편견이 있었던 게 사실입니다. 하지만 보셨다시피 이런 어떤 구조물과 장치를 통해서 하나의 화합으로 거듭날 수 있다는 게또 화합의 장이 되고 있다는 게참 놀라웠는데요. 같이 한번 질의응답 시간을 가져보도록 하겠습니다. 저희가 어, 앞서 공지해드린 대로 지금 실시간으로 어, 질문들을 받고 있는데요 저희가 몇 개만 추려서 어, 라이 씨에게 직접적으로 질문을 해보도록 하겠습니다 먼저 궁금한 것은 일단 건축가로서 세상에 많은 어, 대상들이 있고 영감을 받았을 텐데 과연 어떤 것이 이 장벽에 관심을 갖게 했는지 어, 그게 궁금하네요 Well, I became interested in the wall because I discovered that the wall could be thought of as a form of architecture And I'm always inspired by this very famous quote that says, architects do not design walls, but the spaces between them. And I'm not an advocate for building walls, but I do think that this is a very important moment when we should be designing those spaces that the wall is putting in danger. Spaces for people, spaces for animals, it's transforming the ecology. And so I was very interested in taking on that challenge. 맞습니다. 우리가 가지고 있던 편견과 거의 비슷했던 것 같아요. 사실 뭔가 삼엄한 경비가 있을 것 같고 갈등이 계속 있을 것 같고 대치가 될것 같던 이런 공간을 하나의 건축의 대상으로 봤다라는 발상의 전환이 굉장히 신선했던 것 같습니다. 아, 다음 질문을 한번 드려보도록 하겠습니다. 여러 가지 모델을 만들고 또이 장벽들을 보면서 아, 많은 생각과 감정들이 들었을 것 같아요. 특히나 이 변화한 그 지역의 모습을 보고 어떤 소감을 갖게 됐는지 궁금하네요. Oh, well, that was the most surprising thing because if you can imagine, this wall is constructed through private property. It's constructed through um, protected wilderness areas. They even wanted to construct this wall through a university. So imagine if you're a student and you have to show your passport in order to go to classes. And so to see this transformation take place along the border and to see the kind of damage and destruction this wall is, is causing, uh, it's really heartbreaking. Mm. And I, w I wanted to step in and see if I can at least tell the story of the construction of this wall to make people know, because I think people do not realize that such a large wall has already been constructed. Because our president, he ran on a platform that said, I will build a wall, when, as I showed, There are already 700 miles of wall there. 맞습니다. 아까 영상으로도 잠깐 확인을 하셨듯이 그 장벽에 설치된 구조물을 통해서 아이들이 같이 놀기도 하고 서로 화합도 하고 지금 말씀하신 것처럼 생태계를 좀더큰 개념으로 확장시킬 수 있는 그런 발상을 했다는 것이 특히나 굉장히 감동이 됐을 것 같다는 그런 생각이 드네요. 자, 다음 질문을 한번 보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 장벽을 디자인적인 방식 또는 건축적인 방식으로 접근할 수 있다라는 생각 이 처음에 어떤 게 계기가 됐는지 그게 궁금하네요. Oh, well, I think what we were really doing is we were remembering the stories and just reaccounting the stories. I showed you the story of playing volleyball. I showed you the stories of playing yoga. There's so many stories about horse racing, um, about people actually being launched over the border. And I just continued to write these stories down, but each of these stories needed an illustration. They needed some way to show these ideas. And the teeter-totter was just about a story of thinking about the balance between the United States and Mexico, the labor balances, the trade balances, the equality and inequality. And so that's how these designs emerged. They, they didn't really come from my own imagination. They came from what's happening about, at the border right now. Mm. 그러니까 단순히 개인적인 느낌과 의견뿐만이 아니라 현실을 반영했다라는 점 이런 점을 우리가 들어볼 수가 있었습니다. 아, 질문들이 right. 계속 들어오고 있는데요. 음, 처음으로 세상 장벽들을 심리적으로 허무는 것에 대한 막연한 두려움이 있었을 법도 하잖아요. 처음으로 시행하는 프로젝트이기 때문에 그랬을 때 두려움이 없었는지 궁금하네요. Oh, yes. I was very afraid when I approached the border. And you can see me coming to the border with these pink tater totters and I do not know what's going to happen. And I was so afraid that I don't remember the event. I have to watch it to remember. And we, we stuck it in and then the police came and they said, what are you doing? And we said, oh, we're playing with the children. 
And they said, okay. <laughs> and then the soldiers came with the machine guns and they said, what are you doing? <laughs> and we said, we were playing with the children and they said, okay. And um, I couldn't believe it. I, I was amazed because mothers and children that day had the power. And I think it's that power that they have that could bring that wall down. Mm. 맞습니다. 혼자의 힘은 아니었던 것 같아요. 라엘 교수가 아무리 번뜩이는 재치와 아이디어로 갖고 있었다 하더라도 그 주변에 있던 사람들이 심리적으로 나중에 다 동의를 하고 따라줬기 때문에 이런 기적이 일어나지 않았나 싶은데 저는 말씀 중에 굉장히 어, 재밌었던 게그 핑크색으로 칠해진 시소를 <웃음> 들고 오는 그 자신의 표정이 어, 사뭇 진지했다, 심각했다라고 회상하는 부분이 너무 재밌는 것 같습니다. 그런데 그런 시도와 열정이 있었기 때문에 우리가 오늘 이러한 결과를 아주 신나게 볼수 있는 것 같습니다. 자 다음 질문 한번 같이 보도록 할게요. 음, 우리 현재 대한민국의 상황을 좀 이야기를 해볼까 하는데요. 어, 우리 최근에 한국에서는 아파트 등에서도 외부인과 내부인을 가르는 벽을 세우고 있죠. 아예 외부인을 통제하는 그런 벽을 세우고 있는데 이게 단순히 안전 보안의 문제를 넘어서 이런 식의 말하자면 장벽인 거잖아요. 그렇죠? 이런 장벽들이 사회 곳곳에 등장하게 되는 것에 대한 라엘 씨의 생각이 궁금합니다. Well, as I mentioned before, I think we have to think not about those walls, but we have to think about the spaces that they define. And if we think about those spaces, we can transform those spaces to be beautiful mm -hmm. and humanitarian and useful spaces. And they're, they're, walls are important. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I, I recently wrote an article that there are many people in the United States that say that we need a wall between the United States and Mexico. And their critique is that they say, well, you have walls around your house so why can't we have walls around our country? Mm. And so I said to myself, well, is a, wall, is a house a country? Because if it is, maybe we need a roof over our country. Maybe we need a kitchen in our country. And what does that mean? Maybe we need, a pl we need to be able to feed all of the residents of the country healthy food. Maybe we need a medicine cabinet in our country and we are able to have health care for all the nation. We d in the United States, guns are a problem, and we don't shoot at people within our house, so why should we shoot at people in our country? And we also, when people come knocking at our door to ask for help, we don't detain them and separate families from their children, so why are we doing that in our country? I think that's the important thing to remember. 맞습니다. 장벽 자체에 우리가 집중을 하는 것보다는 장벽이 설치가 된그 공간을 어떻게 바꿀 수 있는지 거기에 대해서 고민을 해보는 것도 좋을 것 같습니다. 아, 남한과 북한에 관련된 질문이 굉장히 많이 들어오고 있습니다. 아, 물론 순식간에 남북 간의 다른 사상 이런 걸 바꿀 수는 없겠죠. 아, 다름을 인정하고 또 서로 오고 갈수 없다는 것을 인정한다고 하더라도 이 남한과 북한 사이에 무엇을 만들면 좋을지 우리 라엘 교수의 아이디어가 있는지 그게 궁금하네요. <웃음> 굉장히 어려운 질문이죠. 저도 보고 깜짝 놀랐습니다. <웃음> that, that is a difficult question. But I think something is already being built and maybe you don't realize it that there's an enormous space that's becoming a space of wildlife. It's becoming a space of nature. And if you think about it that way, that there is this protected zone between the two countries. And if the two countries ever become friends, if those barriers ever come down, what you will have left between you is one of the most beautiful parks in the world. And that's going to be amazing. Because there's, a there's an opportunity there to think about. That at some point in the future, if friendships are made, people will have the, the opportunity to experience a place where wildlife exists, where plants live, where they were preserved because of the tensions that exist between those two countries. So in some ways, you can be optimistic and hope for those connections to be made in some someday. And that when you do, you'll be holding hands in a forest. Mm. 
참 정말 쉽지 않은 질문이어서 <웃음> 과연 어떤 대답이 나올지 <웃음> 어, 저도 귀를 아주 기울이면서 들었던 그런 답변인데요. 어, 아무래도 남북한에 대한 이슈, 이런 어떤 분단이라든지 분리라는 것이 어, 키워드가 됐기 때문에 계속해서 들어오고 있습니다. 무엇보다도 궁금한 것은 이렇게 설치한 구조물, 특히나 이 시소가 아직도 그 지역에 남아있는지 그리고 사람들이 그것을 아까 봤던 방식대로 계속 이용하면서 즐기고 있는지 그런 것들을 궁금하는 궁금해하는 분들이 계시거든요. Oh, it's um, we we took it down, mm. and what it, it's not legal to permanently attach something to the attach to something to the wall, and so we had to remove it. Uh, but we were not asked to remove it. We simply took it down ourselves. In fact, the the main reason we pulled it away is because, like all children, they got tired of playing on the teeter totter. They had enough, and so what we're doing now is we're now going to show the teeter totter at the National Building Museum in Washington D.C., mm. and we're going to be able to show the world the teeter totter so they can see it and they can experience it, and we're also going to build a wall so people can understand the kind of wall that exists because not everyone can travel to the border, and a lot of people are afraid to travel to the border. But I I think when they see that wall and they see how big it is. They'll realize, hopefully, what a mistake it is. 음, 추후에 이런 시소 외에도 장벽을 이용한 다른 구조물을 만들 계획이 있는지 어, 궁금하네요. Um, well, in, in some ways, I have plans to build things, and in some ways, I have plans to unbuild things. So, I will say that when we we asked the museum uh, how we should show it, I said what we really have to do to really show it is we have to cut the wall. And take it into the museum, <laughs> and they said, "Well, I don't think we can do that by April, but we'll <laughs> we'll talk about it." <laughs> so, all these ideas are are ways to think about how we might dismantle the wall. And I have a book called "Border Walls: Architecture" that's full of these kinds of drawings. And so, we do have other ideas and concepts. Uh, one concept that we've been thinking about is to build the binational library. Mm. To build half on one side and half on another side, and make a place where a librarian can come to the wall and read books to children, and children can check out books from one side, and they'll have a place to sit and read, and the librarian will have a sit place to sit and read, and they can share because there's also books of different languages to share, books in English, books in Spanish, and so that's one plan that we have. Ne. 어, 우리가 계속 발상의 전환이다 전환이다 이렇게 말씀드렸는데 박물관 한쪽 벽을 허물 정도의 계획을 어, 구상하고 계셨다라는 게참 어, 전이적이라는 그런 생각도 드네요 아, 도서관이라는 미래의 계획도 가지고 있으니까 관심이 있으신 분들은 라엘 교수님을 어, 팔로잉을 해주시면 좋을 것 같습니다 자, 오, 굉장히 어려운 질문들이 <웃음> 끊임없이 들어오고 있습니다 아, 사실 이 물리적인 장벽뿐만 아니라 사람과 사람 마음속의 어떤 장벽도 우리가 보통 있다고 하잖아요 그러면 이런 마음속의 장벽을 허무는 데에는 어떤 방법이 있을지 아, 그런 걸좀 여쭤보고 싶네요 Um, that's a very good question, and I don't, I don't know if architects can answer that question, but I, what I'll say about that <laughs> is that I think that there is a global movement around the world to construct walls, and I think that that is simply a physical manifestation of the walls that we are building between ourselves. We are building walls um, between different religions and our disagreements, about different races and our disagreement, about different uh, sexual orientations. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also happening around the globe. And different political affiliations, especially. And so, if we agree that we might want to dismantle physical walls, and we want to work hard to do that, maybe we should also make an agreement to try to break down those emotional walls, those cultural walls, those walls of belief that we are building between each other. And, and we, we have to be cognizant of, of that. We have to recognize that that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we need to stop it and move backwards. And I think we have to begin to mm -hmm. have the kind of generosity that it takes to ride a teeter-totter. Right? When you ride a teeter-totter, the teeter-totter itself is dangerous. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's dangerous because you don't know what the person on the other side is going to do. He could just jump off, and then you <laughs> fall down and hit the ground. But he probably won't. And it requires you to make that other person have an experience. Right? It's up to you. There's a generosity that's needed to have this experience on both sides. So if we think about the world like a teeter-totter, then we could think about having fun with other people, being generous with other people, and recognizing again that what we do here has a consequence over there. And so if we do something bad here, something bad is going to happen over there. If we do something good here, something good is going to happen over there. 맞습니다. 사실 이 심리적인 질문을 건축가에게 <웃음> 여쭤본다는 게좀 망설여지긴 했는데 어쨌든 이 시소의 <웃음> 비유에서 지금 말씀해 주신 그 예시가 굉장히 와닿지 않나요? 그렇죠? 제가 여기서 확 힘을 줘서 뛰면은 반대쪽에 앉아 있는 사람이 다칠 수도 있듯이 이렇게 서로를 배려하면서 또 현실을 직시하면서 공동의 노력을 해나가는 것이 결과적으로는 마음의 벽까지 허물 수 있겠다라고 말씀을 해 주셨습니다. 자, 어, 시간 관계상 마지막 질문을 드리죠. 디자인 액티비즘이라는 얘기도 하셨는데요. 디자인과 위트로 세상을 바꾸는 것에 대해서 좀 말씀을 해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. Yes, I'll, I'll try. I teach a class at the university called Design is Activism. Because I think every time someone designs something, they are changing the world. They're putting, whether you're designing a seat uh, and it's soft and it can turn around, or uh, whether you're designing a building or a room, you're making change. And that's really what activism is. It's about petitioning for change. It's about doing something to change. And if you recognize that as a designer that you have control of that, then maybe you can change the world in a really positive way. And so this is what design activism is all about. It's about recognizing that as a designer, you can be transformative. But I don't think that only applies to designers or architects. I think it applies to everyone in the world. That the choices you make about the foods you eat, about what you do in the morning and what you do at night, the way you interact with people, that's all design because you're thinking about how you're engaging the world and how you might transform the world. And so, so this, is, this is design activism. Mm -hmm. yeah. 네, 오늘 이렇게 깊이 있는 식견을 저희와 함께 나눠주신 라엘 교수님께 다시 한번큰 박수 부탁드립니다. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.